many individuals and groups have come together um, to help shape this document. And if you haven't picked one up, it's available um, on the desk as um, we leave uh, the meeting tonight. It's a visionary five-year strategy for public art on the Rose Kennedy Greenway. As a member of the working group that assisted the Public Service over the last um, couple of years, with the public art planning process. I can really attest to the very deliberate and the very careful and the very thoughtful discussions leading up to tonight's unveiling um, of the strategy. And none of those discussions were more inspirational than those that occurred in this room over the course of the last six months. Open forums where the ambition, the thoughtfulness, and the excitement of members of the public, and in particular, Boston's artist community, really were palpable. This five-year strategy speaks to the energy and the passion that we all felt in those open meetings. The strategy really champions for Rose Kennedy Greenway as not just a beautiful, a vibrant city park, but as quite literally an outdoor art museum for all, with national and international reach and repute. It argues for nothing less than excellent, excellence and nothing less than innovation, and for touching the incredible diversity of neighborhoods and communities that stretch along this uniquely shaped park, all one and a half miles of its length. It will not be the home of the bronze general on horseback. <laughs> Instead, it will be a dynamic artistic center with unparalleled opportunities in this city to foster the creative process, an artistic match for the groundbreaking technologies and entrepreneurship that we see at the Waterfront's Innovation District. Our projects should be, and will be, central to enhancing Boston's urban vitality, contributing in significant ways to the city's creative economy. And as we've seen in other urban centers, and as Cher really emphasized tonight, these projects can literally, in and of themselves, not just become an important statement of city identity, but be a powerful economic driver and with proper investment and support, a hugely important promoter for Boston. Our strategy also comes at a perfect moment. A year ago, the Boston Globe's art critic, Sebastian Smee, wrote that New England, I quote, quote, is quietly transforming itself into one of the most dynamic contemporary art scenes in this country. And perhaps the Greenway will help that transformation become less quiet, and just a little bit louder and a little bit bolder as it contributes along with every local institution to ever increasing activities with contemporary art. And as this strategy comes together, the working group was guided by a number of core values. And these values are evident in the final draft of the plan itself. And those were namely the passionate belief in the power of the artist's voice to inspire and to shape exchange and dialogue. That, pu the pu that public art is an essential humanizing force that can engage, animate, uplift, and sometimes, as we've seen recently, infuriate and impassion and that the innovative spirit of artists and their work have a central role to play in daily life and should have a play, a central role to play in the daily life of this great city. And as we take our next steps, collaboration, which was at the very heart of the planning process and the working group itself, collaboration among the key stakeholders of artists, of neighbors, of local institutions, art and otherwise, as well as the city and the state, 
is at the very center of the final strategy. And equally fundamental is that we must look not just to the present, but to the future. We must believe as a city in the presentation of the new and the visionary, of works that might challenge and defy boundaries. It may be sound, it may be light, it may be dance, it may be on one land parcel, or it may extend the entire uh, length uh, of the Greenway. It might be digital, as in the project that the Decorder uh, initiated down at the Harbour Islands pavilions, or projected. It might be static, or it might be animated. It might speak to the remarkable artistic community of Boston, or engage artists internationally. And whatever it is, as Cher indicated, it will also be temporary to ensure the greatest diversity of projects possible. There is obviously still an enormous amount to do with fundraising not least among those key priorities and most pressing of tasks. But this is a project that all of us should be able to believe in and see it as vital for the legacy of the city. Sometimes when we gaze to the south, it's hard not just to be a little envious of what was recently called nothing less than a golden age for public art in New York City. And yet, it's quite easy to forget when faced with the very, the very robustness of New York's public art program today, that that landscape was very different not so long ago, and that in many respects, it was the, the gates um, in 2005, Christo and Jean Claude's Central Park installation that really led to a renaissance in New York. The Rose Kennedy Greenway is now at a crossroads, and we cannot squander what is a huge opportunity. It's an opportunity to create a healthy, vigorous cultural landscape through the very heart of downtown Boston. It's rare in any urban context that we have what we have been presented here. Effectively, a blank canvas, a tabula rasa, for artists to be inspired by and in turn create compelling works that could engage hundreds of thousands of people a year in wonder and curiosity. Our ambition is high. But if we can harness this city's resources, if we can get everyone around the table, and if we can harness the innovative spirit that is so deep in Boston and gain your full support, together we have the chance not just to follow or to emulate the great public art projects that have defined Chicago or New York, but in short, to lead, and to lead one of the most creative, democratic, nimble, and innovative public art programs in the country. Thank you. You guys, but I'm ready to cry here. <laughs> this is powerful stuff, you guys. Um, I'm really happy uh, to be up here presenting this, this final strategy. And I want to thank my uh, fellow members of the working group, the staff, all the artists who showed up um, to make this, this plan a reality. And especially want to mention, again, Renee Pachaki and Jennifer McGregor, our consultants. This was a nine month uh, process and it really, we did sort of, at the end, sort of give, give labor. This was, this was tough. Um, as an artist, I'm really excited um, that this plan recognizes uh, artists, first and foremost. And uh, it is also recognizes that the, the Conservancy and the Greenway are an evolving place. And so the five-year five timeline really seems to, to work for, for what we're, we're, we're getting at. <coughs> Throughout the five years, we'll be analyzing all of the, uh, surprise, we'll be analyzing all of our works that we put out there, the processes, so that after five years, we can go ahead with another plan. So when we think about this plan, we have to start with a vision. And as uh, Edward uh, and um, as Edward likes to say, the vision equals the content. The content is the artwork that goes out there. These are some of the key bullet points that we've recognized as vision. Innovative. We've talked about this already. This is going to this is this is what Boston is all about. 
recognizing the young, innovative workforce. Contemporary, bold. Cher brought up risk taking. I think that's that's being bold. Temporary again, as we've outlined. Engaging people in meaningful experiences. Cher uh, talked about the bodily, the the visceral experience as being one of the three um, uh, sort of tenets of her talk. And also reflecting what Boston can be as a 21st century city. I'm doing the nuts and bolts here. This is this is what happens. We need um, we need curators, um, and we need to think about the works that come to the Greenway in a sort of conceptual framework. The four that we've outlined are connection, interactivity, civic dialogue, ecology, and the environment. To help us categorize the projects that would fit within these frameworks, we've come up with two project types. Magnets and platforms. Platforms are going to use the existing assets of the Greenway, and we'll get to the uh, examples in a moment. Uh, they can be diverse and vary in scale and duration. A magnet, on the other hand, the example we keep turning to over and over again as, as is the gates, that attracts uh, international attention and takes multiple years in planning and fundraising. We've come up with menus, and again, I want to mention that this is all flexible. These categories are very, very broad. Civic dialogue can mean a lot of things. The ecology can mean a lot of things. So here are some very general platform menu ideas, and I'm not going to go through and labor each one because there's booklets here, and we're going to have a panel after, after I stop. So light blade transformation using, again, existing asset. Projections at Dewey Square. Uh, using the screen that Edward showed at the Boston Harbor Islands Pavilion um, creates a unique opportunity. Winter Lights is a program the Conservancy has been doing for three years running and um, already has a certain bit of a brand that we can build off of. Smartphone is using uh, mobile technology to present art in a new way, in a very interactive way, and sort of speaks to the innovation of, of, of the plan. Interdisciplinary placemaking projects. This is along the scale of um, PS1's uh, summer program, which can also be sort of uh, equated to a Parcel 12 project space. Parcel 12, for those of you who don't know it, is between the North End and uh, the, the Wharf District. And it is uh, right now an undeveloped plot that would be um, probably perfect, in my opinion, for an intervention. And lastly, the vent, stakes, uh, vent stacks and air intake structures, as we saw with this Gemios, um, took full advantage of what is a, a blank, blank slate. Um, this is an example of Jim Campbell's work. Uh, we look at this as a piece that could go either in winter lights um, or sort of using the innovation uh, of a conceptual framework. And again, Krista, that's our magnet program. That's our, that's our benchmark. Types of magnet programs. Um, we, f we realized in creating this plan that we needed a place for sculpture. Uh, the platforms were much more about technology, uh, interaction, placemaking, but there are still, uh, there is still a place for sculpture. So Sculpture Plus is a category that would um, be along the lines of the gates, a high visibility, um, high impact. <coughs> along the way, this is a five-year program, it's not all going to happen at the at, 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 at beginning, um, we'd like to create an artist-in-residency program. Uh, again, as I was saying, this plan starts with artists and the, the creativity, the innovative ideas of artists. And an artist-in-residency program would give artists a place, uh, not literally to stay on the Greenway, but to work with the Greenway on this, uh, as, as, you know, as a 24-hour clock, if they would like, and to help us build some long-term um, solutions and relationships with people in the city. Lastly, uh, there are going to be a number of development projects that are happening that are happening now and will happen in the future along the Greenway, and we want to make sure that artists are at the table. Each one of these projects, as Cher will attest, needs outreach. We need to help those who have not yet come to, come to this church that we just heard understand public art. And so with each of our projects, we will... Uh, create a plan for advertising, for marketing, uh, interpreted signage, 
kids' programs. I, I noticed on one of the slides that was rolling earlier, there was a, a girl drawing the Osgenios mural. I thought it was perfect. Um, and we'd also like to take advantage of off-site exhibition spaces so we can continue uh, a dialogue that a piece might be creating in, say, the ICA or a lobby nearby. This is how it all happens. Each year, uh, probably in January, we're going to have a, a public art project plan that will be created with the Conservancy staff. The um, plan recommends uh, full staff at the end of these five years with a director and, and, and manager and other admin to support. Um, for now, it's Conservancy staff. The advisory committee, which is also the working group right now, will be looking at these works for artistic excellence after Conservancy staff looks at it for, does this meet one of our frameworks? Does it fall into civic dialogue? Is it about ecology? Is it a magnet? Is it a, is it a, um, a platform? And then we also are working with the board, of course, uh, to integrate this into the, the annual budget. These projects don't, aren't, aren't cheap. The groups are looking at, one, prompted proposals. These are proposals that the Conservancy um, will put out. So the Conservancy is shifting from, a, as it's been a reactive agency, you know, responding to just about, I think every one of you has sort of come up with ideas, and that's great. We're going to shift a little bit more to a proactive. So we will be sending out proposals and considering those. We will, however, still be considering unsolicited program, projects and programs because that is where those great innovative ideas come from. For the next five years, however, we will not be um, entertaining any permanent works or memorials. I touched on the Art Advisory Committee. This is, 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 is building off of the working group. So they are um, appointed by the executive director. They have a one three-year term, which is staggered for continuity. They're experts in their res uh, respective fields. We want to make sure that artistic ex excellence is at the first and foremost of this program. Art, art historians, curators, administrators, landscape architects, uh. um, it's important that the artwork fits within the context of the Greenway, the city, and the landscape. This group will come together, review the, the, the works. So works will go to staff, works go to the um, advisory committee, which will then create this annual plan. And then, once all of these works have gone through, it will go to the Boston Art Commission <coughs> review, which is the process in Boston. And I believe we have a, a slide here. I just want to, because I already stepped on this, I'm going to go through it again. Public art staff, advisory committee. One step that I haven't talked about in here is MassDOT. They are our leaseholders. And we want to make sure that any um, artwork, whether it's programmatic or sculpture, does not impact um, the state property and then to Boston Art Commission. Ah. One very important component in there is step two through four, the public engagement. As we're going through this process, we want to make sure that we are reaching out to the public to understand, for the public, and mostly I'm going to say that's probably artists who are going to come to these, um, so that we're all kind of coming up at the same time. We've heard about all of the, the controversial artworks that weren't ah. vetted publicly in some way or another, and they usually come down. Um, the, the committee uh, will, be, is, will be looking at um, a various ways of choosing artwork. So once they come up with the, with the plan, let's say, for instance, it's going to be um, a platform parcel 12 project. There are so many ways to uh, bring artists to these projects, and each one is going to fit a different project. So there's the, the sort of industry standard, which is open selection. You could do a request for qualifications, a request for proposals. Um, there's invitational selection. There's also a direct selection. If there is an idea that just has legs and is really going to work, uh, the Conservancy could go out to artists specifically to help realize that. Guest curators um, are another wonderful way, uh, perhaps with Parcel 12 as an example. Um, who a guest curator could come with their sort of stable of artists that um, are already working in that mode of, of landscape. This is, I, I know we've, I think every one of us here has, has touched on the Osgenios mural as, as a um, wonderful, not only collaboration, 
um, but also as uh, getting civic dialogue. And it came at a very low price. It happened quickly, and it came about because of really great partnerships. And to that point, this is the Greenway's uh, plan for fundraising and the planning for the next year and a half. The Conservancy is going to uh, keep with its current staff, Director of Public Programs, Director of Planning and Design, and Visual Arts Manager, that's Caitlin. And there'll be a continuation of the working group, which will serve in the same capacity as the advisory group, uh, advisory committee, at least for the next six months. <coughs> this group has put together a plan for the next year um, that wow. continues to build community and engage audiences. We'd love to have continued um, uh, meetings like this, share your excellent, we just want to clone you and just keep bringing in new people like you. Um, to again, sort of build the, the excitement for public art. Partnerships with local institutions, as we've been doing. Um, we want to keep looking at these ideas that are coming to us in email and conversations um, around the city, un, un, uh, unsolicited proposals, but they must be, they must be fully funded uh, to be recognized for this 2012-2013 uh, year. And this is the moment that so many people have been waiting for. Um, we are putting out two, uh, two proposals, one for a platform and one for a magnet. The first one is Winter Lights. It's a platform program. The call, it's a request for, for qualifications. Um, the call is to develop proposals for a temporary site-specific light-based winter art installation. It's pretty broad. Think big, guys. <laughs> Up to three artists will be selected. We will do our best to choose one Boston area artist. Boston area is defined as within the 495 belt. These artists or teams will receive uh, 5,500 as, as an honorarium. And they're uh, asked to think about a budget of $100,000. The second request for qualifications comes uh, for a magnet program that we'd like to see happen in 2015. Again, temporary, site-specific, and this is a real stretch and a real challenge, and I think really exciting, and that is to connect the green light physically, experientially. Um, think of those segments and think how you can use them to create connection. Again, it's very similar to um, the, the other call, the proposal honorarium 5,500, up to three artists will be selected, and the project budget this time is 300,000. At this point, I think it's um, fair to uh, recognize Caitlin and to bring up Caitlin and the rest of our um, uh, panel or group here to talk about questions you might have. If you'd like to download, if there are not copies left, you can also download um, this in its entirety. I tried to go through this really quickly because we're running way over time. Um, this is probably 20 pages of, of words and the, and, the, and the reasoning behind why this was all um, put together. So with that, why don't I bring up the group and Nancy? Sure, Edward, Kate, thank you so very much. Now, we asked them to stay as our a panel of experts to answer some questions from the audience. And I'm aware that while the Greenway Conservancy's board meetings end on time, this is an exception. <laughs> And I also see how many of you have stayed. So please, those of you who feel you have to leave, um, thank you so much for coming tonight. And those of you who can stay, we'd love to have you for a bit more. And why don't we say that we will end at 8 o'clock sharp, shall we? All right, sure. May I have the first question? Please. Sure. I just have a, a question about um, marketing at this point, believe it or not. I mean, these are really fantastic opportunities and visions that have just been discussed here today. And as, you know, it's something new and exciting in the city of Boston. And I'm wondering if um, that also brings with it a shift at how we are going to get the word out to attract those artists that um, may not be already familiar with this new initiative. Sure, I appreciate that. Um, 
Uh, Renee and Jennifer were very helpful as, as the consultants and provided us with a list of um, artist opportunity sites where we could post these calls um, nationally, internationally. So um, we will be, they are just live on our website today. So tomorrow they will go out to, to all these outlets. But please um, spread them to your own um, listservs and contacts. Um, we'd love that, to get them in the hands of as many artists as possible. Yeah, thank you. Um, about institutions, uh, and I think I said enough to Nancy about this, in addition to the MFA, et cetera, and the ICA, there are also <coughs> the music institutions, Berkeley and whatever, and thinking about um, music as an art, not to be stupid about it, but to what extent can that kind of partnership not only cr uh, create an additional depth to the piece, but also perhaps even provide funding? Uh, but to think about, I mean, one of the biggest assets the city has is the plethora of institutions. And, to think, and, and not to stop with the, with all due respect to the MFA, to stop with that, but to really think much more broadly about what's possible. Yeah, thank you. No, thank you, Ron. I think that really touches upon something that we talked quite actively about, that um, this is an opportunity for all of Boston's institutions, whether they're institutions of higher learning, whether they're the music schools, whether they're um, the art colleges or the art museums, uh, to really come together and think creatively and broadly about partnership, not just among themselves, but also um, uh, with, with the Greenway. And it's thinking uh, nimbly and out of the box as well in terms of what can actually happen um, on the Greenway. It doesn't just have to be visual. Please. Um, I'm really excited about what I'm hearing tonight, especially words like risk and challenge and so on. And I think that the um, Os Gemios mural represents a very important turning point for the city of Boston, um, even more broader than the Greenway. And I'd like to see the Greenway actually teach the city of Boston about successes like this mural, controversy aside. My question is, um, have, you, have you analyzed the process by which that happened, where you had institutions like the ICA, you had agencies like MassDOT, and somehow got buy-in for what we would say is a challenging work of art? Because this is very unique for our city, and I think if that's studied and replicated, we would be on our way. Um, is that somehow preserved somehow or understood what happened there? Yeah, and, and, and I just want to point out that Steve has created a, a Facebook page for Osgemios, which is a, a like the Osgemios Facebook page. What's the name of it? It's Osgemios. I, just, I did that to, to, to kind of raise awareness and also exactly. raise, raise kind of like uh, support for the Osgemios. Right, and, and to Mary's point, how do we get the word out? It's through things like that. It's by talking to your neighbors. I live in the leather district. I've had lots of conversations about that mural. Most of my neighbors don't like it, and we have really great conversations about it. So it is going to take individuals one on one having conversations and things like you know creating a Facebook page and really liking something. Um, to your point about that process, it was amazing, and I know that Caitlin and Nancy are studying it and are going to replicate it. Go <laughs> ahead. I can also say a little bit about this um, sitting on the Boston Art Commission as well. And um, I, I think I can attest that sometimes it takes not just months but years for um, projects in the city to move through all of the various, um, sometimes hurdles. And there was 120% belief in this project from the absolute get-go. And we were thrilled to work with the ICA and Pedro, who's actually here tonight. And um, there was a realization from the very beginning that there was an urgency um, to move this through as quickly as possible. And I think every um, city institution um, really um, stepped up. And we were able to do so um, in a very careful and thoughtful way, but also extremely rapidly. I also want to add that there's something infectious about that work. Not, not like that it needs treatment, but infectious in a good way. I teach a public art seminar, and I had taken my students on a field trip a couple weeks ago to see it. And then last week, um, Jeff Hargaden was nice enough to come and, and visit with my students and talk to them. We were talking to them about, you know, Dewey Square and what had happened there. And 
over half the kids in the class had said, well, I went back after the, you know, the requirement to go on the field trip, and I took my friend, I took my mother, I did, you know, here's my dad, and he drives past that all every day. And what it re made me realize that there was this kind of, you know, ripple effect that's happening with the work, and it's so much not about whether or not you like it, in a way. It's about what it does for us as a city and the dialogue that it starts. We have one question here, please. There will be some translation, I think, as well. Is there? By angle. By angle. Thank you, Gilbert. Um, Mr. Henry Yi is a Chinatown Resident Association uh, co president. There were many years to talk about uh, Chinatown Park, which is um, in the heart of Chinatown, and uh, he, all this year he been uh, saying that uh, we would like some uh, more with Chinese culture and, and theme to mix in with the, with the park's uh, current structure. Right now it's just an empty space, and he would like uh, the board would consider looking into that with mixing with cultural uh, uh, theme into the, the, the park. Chinese culture is a many years his, history and and to uh, to Western uh, people they would like to emphasize or, or promote the Chinese culture to the to the Western uh, culture to make it um, um, melting pot in the, in the city that make it the vibrant. The you know, we have been asking for a lot of times. Just like a big room, there is a big room that can be done. Uh, do do performance, do party, do music, or do see a song. One kind of place, but now this park is just a big room that has no big room. No big room in it. No big room in it. No big room in it. A couple of years ago, they were talking about a pavilion. Uh, um, style of uh, structure yeah, to install into the park to make it like a music can be, can be using it as a performance uh, or, or uh, people gather and uh, places and he would love to see that would incorporate into the uh, art uh, program that hopefully we can have some sort of that kind of uh, structure with the Chinese theme wrapped uh, right around it and pretty identify that as uh, in the heart of Chinatown and it's part of the greenway. This seems to be the Chinatown Park on the end of the, at the, at the, at the greenway is kind of being uh, ignored a little bit. Well, hey, man, come on, uh, maybe I can go to the end of the day, the end of the day, the 要求加入我們Chinese的人 and so the, um, the subcommittee or, or, or the project committee, uh, he would love to see a uh, Asian uh, direct representation in India. So truly representing uh, Asian culture and uh, that provide uh, more information about uh, how Chinese culture is it's all about and to Western uh, folks that may not know um, our 
many years of Chinese uh, culture, they would like to see uh, more of a woman from the Asian uh, community. I think this could be addressed in a few ways. Um, one is through programs and events. Uh, there are a lot of opportunities to have programs in that space, and there can be more, I think. The other way is through the art plan. And the, propose, the, the, the strategy has a few ways. One is to get an artist in here. We've had this conversation a lot. I've been with the Conservancy since 2007, and this, this idea of, of more art and more sort of uh, Chinese culturally centered art has come up on, over and over again, but it hasn't been solved in community meetings, and perhaps that's one of the areas that an artist, say an artist in residence could, could address, or one of the, the platform programs could address. Um, so it's something, and I'm glad you brought that up for this group in, in the art. Um, there's one other way, and I would just, I'm a, a resident of, of, of the Leather District. I, I live on Lincoln Street. I'd love to understand more about the culture across the street. And so as, as I'm not, uh, I don't know if Nancy can change the, the, the makeup of the working group right now, but I can, uh, I'd love to have those conversations with you. Uh 幫助的資料<笑> 能夠將這個意念帶給他們的技師<笑> I suggest is that we again it's almost 8 o'clock we'll take one more question and then anyone who would like to uh, one question, I'm sorry. <laughs> and anyone who would like to stay, uh, I, if our panel would stay another 15 minutes or 10, uh, perhaps we I could have get a everyone. I a nine-year-old and I want to see her before she goes to what? bed. We make it 10. She's my favorite sure. piece of public art. <laughs> Please. Hi, I, I want to say congratulations because this is really inspiring. But I'd like to ask if we, everyone tends to silo in the city because everyone's so busy. So we really need a platform for people to come together. It may not be that it always happens in green, but to provide a platform to say, hey, I'm bringing an artist in from X. Maybe it's a green one. Who else can we partner with? Or who else do we know who can do X, Y, and Z? And maybe be that kind of conduit, too, that isn't part of the plan. But to have that kind of resource and people management would be a great thing to add to this. Um, because, you know, if I knew someone was having an artist coming in from X and we had a gallery space or could bring the community from South Boston in, it'd be great to be able to have that kind of facilitation as a hub, so to speak. I agree, and I think our working, our working group right now is, is working in that way, bringing these connections together, but there can, can be improvement for that. I would like to have three seconds. Um, I would like to suggest that um, the idea that we are uh, explaining what, consider what is art to sound like dance, etc., etc., is very great. And I also think that uh, you probably saw some of this uh, share when you were in Paris uh, that we consider a uh, mur vertical that Patrick Blanc puts uh, up in, in uh, a Raleigh Museum, for example all over the world, and Boston is the only place that doesn't have one yet. And uh, they are just terrific, and they actually speak to a public garden, a public um, space, a, a park. And I live in the uh, city of Boston, and I walk everywhere. 
So I have seen all the installations that you have. I think they're absolutely fantastic. I hate the smoke, uh, the uh, uh, chimneys from the, and this would be a wonderful way to cover them up. And there's some recent research that says that people feel very good if they see trees. And there's yeah. a sound, uh, sound research published in uh, um, Science, uh, uh, and so there will be actually great evidence, and so I would like to say that we should not just focus on the art uh, forms that you've been talking about, but this is also an art form, and uh, I uh, admire, uh, uh, invite everybody to look at uh, the internet, Google Patrick Blanc, and you'll find 50,000 different things, and he's done 300 installations all over the world. Not here, but everywhere else. That is a wonderful call to action to end on. And, and to thank everyone so much for coming and for all your support uh, and your support going forward uh, to harness public art is just one more way that Boston is a great city. Thank you so much. Both the artist plan.